Hi, I'm Jeff Buys Cars and this is not my old touring car. This is another one that lives fairly locally and this is Jake and we're gonna chat about touring cars and we're also, I'm pointing at your willy there, mate. We're also, we're gonna talk about um, Jake's job because you are a um, fast response responder person man. That's the one. So we'll go find out some more about that. Jake, tell me about your 850 replica. Uh, this is my Volvo 850. I've owned it for four years now. Uh, the stickers actually only went on approximately six months ago. Yeah, I remember uh, you telling me that you were going to do it. We've been in touch for quite a while, haven't we? Have, we have, we have. And my plan was always to do this. I think it's criminal to not, you know, not... If you own a white Volvo 850 estate and you don't do this, Pointless out one, isn't it? I fully agree. Um, so that was the plan all the all the long. Uh, the stickers have stayed in a box in my living room uh, for three years, much to a girlfriend's dismay. They finally got on. Uh, Sticking it all yourself? Uh, yeah, me and my dad. So my, yep. my dad does a lot of work with vinyl. So me yep. and him kind of spent a couple of days just putting the stickers on, sourced the wheels, put the coilovers on, and that was it done. And then, as you know, pretty much the day after we finished it, I blew the head gasket. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so then it was off the road for another few weeks whilst we sorted that. Yeah. Uh, and a load more money thrown into it. Yeah, absolutely. So two litre, 2.5? 2.5, 10 valve. However... Manual, auto? Manual. Uh, perfect combo. Yeah, perfect combo. And then it, it's always run a little bit rough and I never kind of understood why. And when we had the head gasket done, the mechanic phoned me up and said, uh, I thought you told me it was a 10 valve, but it got a 20 valve head on it. Oh, okay, So fine. at some point, someone's put a 20 valve head on it. So yeah. he's adjusted the timing here and there and it runs better than ever. And I don't think it'd really affect it other than it might use a bit more fuel. Yeah, it's still got the original cat on it. Uh, yeah. that, it has. It won't, so. it won't have by tonight. I know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, fair enough. I mean, um, there's a lot to love about that, isn't there? Yeah. You know, nice and simple. And I could tell just by uh, you following me a moment ago when we were driving around together, they get a lot of attention, don't they? Yes, a lot. Everybody loves a yeah. race car on the road. 100%. Especially the Volvo as well. I, I feel like they get, it got attention before the stickers went on. You get a lot of kind of ex-coppers come up and say, oh, we used to have one as the motorway cops cars yep. and stuff like that. There's a lot of love for them. There really um, is. There really is. It's a, it is. The, the 850 is a universally loved car, but as soon as you stick a one up with those race graphics, yep. um, even though... I think it was two seasons. It might even only been it wasn't a, a long time. It wasn't a long time. It was 1995. Uh, they never really won a race. Yep. Um, and most of the drivers hated them, from yep. what I understand. And if the if the estate went past you on the track in the touring cars, yep. they'd always try and knock the rear bumper. So whenever you see the footage, the rear bumpers are hanging off because yep. the other drivers took exceptions being passed by an estate. Oh, hated it. So, but from a marketing point of view, what a slice of genius. Yeah. And because we all remember it. Yeah, and it's funny what comes out of the woodwork as well, because like you say, everybody always has fond memories of them. Um, and then I bumped into a chap the other day who decided to come up and tell me that he he helped fit all the roofs to the race cars. Oh, amazing. So it just brings loads of stories out. Yeah. And the race car engine in and of itself is an absolutely, I mean, that's a video all of its own. Yeah. In what they did. Didn't they kind of bypass some rules and things like yeah, that? Yeah, your valves could only be set at a certain angle. Yeah. So to get around that, they canted the whole engine yeah. over. Bonkers. Which was crazy. Yeah. You know, talk yeah. about pushing the rules, but brilliant. Um, right, let's jump in your car because you are, a, let me get this right, what's your... You're, you're a res incident response person, man. That's kind of what it is, yeah. That's pretty much bang on. Uh, so I am a heart paramedic. Nothing to do with the heart. Yeah. It's spelled H-A-R-T, Hazardous Area Response Team. Yeah. Uh, so essentially, I'm a paramedic. I do all the same things normal paramedics do, uh, but we go to hazardous areas. We've just got some specific training. So we can go into water, work at heights, underground, yep. counter-terrorism, stuff like that. All right, let's jump in the car and we'll, uh, we'll have a chat about okay. that because that's arguably more interesting <laughs> than having two old Volvos in front of us. This, this then essentially is pretty much the same car that mine was built on, a 2.5 uh, 10 valve, although yours has got 20 valve head, manual gearbox, cloth upholstery, which is super comfortable. So yeah, it's the same format as, as what my race car was. And, and as we were just saying off camera, I miss that car very much. Yeah. And the new owner has turned it into um, something more than it was. And it now has an Instagram account. And every time I see it pop up on Facebook, it's usually someone that has seen it on the motorway and they snap a picture and be like, oh, I saw this old girl. And then it gets thousands of likes. And it's like seeing your ex-girlfriend and finding out that she got married. Yeah. That's exactly how it feels when I see that car. Anyway, let's have a chat. Jeff buys cars. Still, YouTube's most boring car and conspiracy and conversation channel. <laughs>